Okay. Okay, today we're going to work on chip soldering. So the supplies you'll need are your tin snips, some paste flux, brush, toothpick, your solder, and the pieces of metal that you're soldering together. We're going to start with setting up your end-to-end -end solder seam on your thicker stock wire. The solder that you use, we have sterling silver solder, which comes in different melting temperatures. The blue designates medium solder, and we also have some yellow solder. And the yellow is the closest to brass, so if you're soldering brass together, go ahead and use the yellow sil sil silver solder, even though it only is a hard melting temperature. It has the highest melting temperature. So the solder is what, when liquefied, will seal two ends of metals together that ha that's touching with no gaps. The flux is what you're going to use to protect the metal from fire scale, to help clean the oils off of the metal, to help pick up the solder with the brush and hold it in place, and it provides a glassy surface for the solder to flow so that it will be a cleaner solder seam. So I painted my piece with flux. Then I need my tin snips to go ahead and cut this to about the size of a pinhead. So this is a pretty thin piece. The yellow silver solder has a purple little mark on the end of it. You want to leave that on and cut from the other end. And then just line this up so you barely, barely see any solder. Point that down towards your table. And then that's about the size you're looking for. Oftentimes I'll find that a toothpick will help pick up that solder a little bit easier. And I'm going to lay it on the seam. It doesn't matter if it's on the top or the side or the inside. Solder will flow to the hottest part, so depending on how you use your torch, you can either lay it on the inside and pull it out, or you can lay it on the top and pull it down, or you can lay it on the outside and pull it in. You can make that decision when you get there. So we're going to go ahead and put this aside for now, because that's set up ready to solder. And you only need to place your solder chips about an eighth of an inch apart. So this one's a little bit different. So this is where I'm going to solder my sheet metal to my wire. So I'm going to do a side-to-side -side solder seam. I would suggest you don't get any wider than that because it's a little bit of a tougher go the first time you're soldering. But I could just as easily do this as long as there are no gaps between the wire and the sheet metal. That's really, really important when you're soldering that you don't have any gaps. Everything is flush together. So again, I would go ahead and coat all of the metal with flux front and back. For demo purposes, I'm just going to coat where it is going to actually get soldered. I also have the end of this meeting the side of it, so that's another one of the requirements for the sample piece. So this would solve all the requirements. Now my silver solder, I'm going to go ahead and use medium. This is cut a little bit wider, so I'm going to go ahead and cut it down and narrow that out a little bit, and then I can go ahead and cross cut from there. I already have some cut here. So I'm just going to use those. If you want, you can use the brush to pick up those solder chips and lay it on. And you're going to lay them on right where they meet. You don't want it to bridge and go left to right in this particular circumstance. You want it to run parallel with the seam. The smaller, the better. And you're going to place them about an eighth of an inch apart. If I have a larger one on here, I'm not able to control that as much as the smaller chips of solder, even though it still might work. Sometimes the brush is tough to do, so again, I'm going to come back in and add one on. I'm going to put four little chips right here. The flux will hold that in place once it dries. Then I'm going to go ahead and put a chip of solder down here. I'm going to do these both at the same time. Sometimes you'll find that you want to solder one together and then go back and do the other one. But this makes sense to me just to lay it on the way it is. And again, you're laying the solder chip on where one meets the other. I'm actually laying it on the inside edge here because I'm planning on heating out here. I could just as easily lay it on the outside edge or on the top. I find the edges, it must be touching both metals. If you've got a little bit of a V-gap in here, make sure it's running parallel. That makes it a little more successful. And then you're going to just remove all of this from the solder block. I did set up on a solder block. That makes it easier to transport. I'm just going to separate these two, and then I'll talk about heating here, and I'll talk about heating here. Once I take it over to the solder station, 
I'm going to be using the hottest part of my flame and I'm going to be using the feathered part of my flame. We're going to start with drying it and then we will come in and target our heat. Solder will flow to the hottest spot, but heat wants to flow to the coolest spot. So what we need to do is go ahead and heat up outside of it to force the heat to the solder seam. And then we target around that solder seam and then we just circle around the solder chips themselves. The worst thing you can do is actually just go straight in and heat up the solder because if solder flows to the hottest spot and that gets hot first, it will just ball up and it will not work. It will not, will not go to liquid. So we'll head on over to the solder station to do the rest of it.